There are a lot of knives out there. There are a lot of steels out there. Some steels are very expensive, some are very cheap, but the price doesn't always reflect how well that steel performs or what you should necessarily buy. So today we're going to talk about what I think are the three most overrated knife steels, the three most underrated knife steels, and the knife steel that I have as my personal favorite, at least for folding knives. So here we go. The number one most overrated steel, in my opinion, is M390. What I've found with M390 is that it doesn't perform better than cheaper steels. So in my edge retention testing, I'll put up the numbers here of the M390 knives that I have tested. You can see these are good numbers, but they don't justify the expense over some of these other steels when you see the edge retention numbers that I'm gonna put up for them a little later. The second thing about M390 is that it doesn't have the corrosion resistance that people think it does. I don't know if you can see on this knife, but you can see there is some corrosion on that knife right now. In my testing of M390 versus S35VN, the S35VN knife had a little bit better edge retention because of the corrosion resistance. The edge corroded off a little slower on the S35VN knife than it did on the M390 knife. So overall, I would say don't spend your money on M390. The second most overrated steel out there right now, I would say is MagnaCut. Now, don't jump on the wagon to burn me yet. I do love MagnaCut steel. I just don't think it's worth the upcharge that people are charging for it. A lot of times you're gonna see MagnaCut knives going for two, three, four hundred dollars and the only thing that's different about them from a cheaper knife is the fact that they have MagnaCut blades. If you go online and you actually look up how much MagnaCut steel costs, you're going to see that enough MagnaCut steel to make this knife only costs about $10. Why then is this knife costing $100 more if the steel only costs 10 bucks? It shouldn't. Uh, so while MagnaCut does have fantastic corrosion resistance, it does have very good edge retention, uh, it does not justify the huge increase in price that people are paying for it. Prices are starting to come down. You can get a Kershaw like this for about 160 bucks now, or $140 right now. So that's a good thing, but it's overpriced for what it is. My third most overrated steel is D2. So D2 is very popular. Thankfully, it is not very expensive. A lot of people like it, but as you saw in my corrosion resistance testing, D2 gets dull in your pocket just from having it in your pocket and the moisture around your body corroding it, whether you use it or not. Uh, so D2 is gonna get dull very quickly. My test about a week before the edge was trash and you don't even have to use it for that to happen. So because of that, I think D2 is an overrated steel and is not a very good steel for folding knives. Now let's get into steels that I think are underrated. Underrated steels, first of all, are things like VG10. So VG10, if it's heat treated properly, has actually done very well in my edge retention tests. Put up some numbers again. Uh, that combined with its corrosion resistance means that this stuff stays sharp for a very long time. I think it's gotten a bad rap because there have been a lot of cheap knives that have been made of VG10. And so they haven't had very good heat treats and therefore they haven't performed very well when it wasn't really the steel's fault, it was more the fault of how it was manufactured. So VG10 should not be overlooked. My second underrated steel is good old 4116. I have had a couple knives, both fixed and folding in 4116. Both have done very well in my edge retention testing and both have held an edge for a very long time when carrying them. I think that that is a very cheap steel that a lot of people skip over that you absolutely shouldn't because it's fantastic stuff. People make comments like, I always have 4116. We kind of know what that does. I don't think people really do know what it does. It's a great steel and I choose to carry it over more expensive steels a lot. 
Last but not least, we have my most underrated steel, which is 14C28N. So knives in this steel have actually done better than literally anything else I have ever tested in my edge retention testing. And it's still one of the cheapest steels out there. You can get a knife with this steel for in the $40 to $60 range pretty consistently. And it's very good stuff. Again, it tops out my corrosion or tops out my edge retention testing. It does very well corrosion resistance. I've carried knives made out of this stuff in my pocket for months without sharpening them. It's very good stuff and it's very underrated. And you should definitely look into this if you're looking for a new knife, really at any price point. There's some very good knives out here with that. Now, very last but not least, my absolute favorite knife steel, especially for folding knives, is Vanax. And I think this is a tragedy that this does not get used more. It is a more expensive steel because it's very hard to manufacture. Uh, there are some knives out there that are deals if you can look carefully. I got this particular knife as a factory second from Indiana Knives. I only paid about 120 bucks for it. I did have to do some massaging and some grinding and sanding to the internals of this knife to get it to function well. But I love this steel because it has the best corrosion resistance, literally, of any steel out there. Uh, and while it doesn't hold quite the edge that uh, a good 4116 or 14C28N will, it's very close and it can sit in your pocket for years. And as long as you don't use it, it's never going to go dull. So those are my favorite knife steels. Hopefully that will help you to save money and have some really good knives.